transactions. So, what are transactions? A transaction is basically uh, some what happens. Normally, we execute single queries, but sometimes we can make a group of queries, group of operations that can be executed to solve a single purpose. So, in that that particular thing, we use case we use transactions. It is basically to run the manipulate manipulation operations all together. So, if a single action of that particular transaction or single query of that particular transaction fails, then entire transaction leads to fail. It never returns anything. So, this is the purpose of transaction. For example, we have to transfer a money from one account to another. So, in that case, first of all, we are going to check that if amount is sufficient in our account or not. If it is fine, we are going to deduct the amount from that amount and going to transfer it to the next amount. So, this is again, this is a process, a cycle that should go. So, this cycle is done in a transaction so that if anything unexpected occurs, we can roll back, we come back to our initial stage. So, here is, we call it acid, basically acid principle that is used in transactions. Acid means, A means atomicity, it simply means all the operations are completed successfully, either all the operations are completed successfully or no operation is, com is completed. Means, if, if there is any issue with any of the transaction action, we just roll back everything. So, if we maintain our atomicity, then it is consistency. It simply means either the transaction is processed completely or it is not processed at all. So, it remains the database re remains the consistent. If we are going to update the uh, data of three tables in transactions and if I have updated data for first table and in update, while updating for the second table, I got some error. So, even the data for the first table will be rolled back. Simply means the data will remain all and remain consistent. There is no chance that data, data will be inconsistent. Next is isolation. Isolation simply means that each transaction is independent of other transactions. No transaction can overlap with any of the other transactions. So, it is isolated with other other transactions. Durability simply means once the transactions or all the transactions are executed and we have committed them, we have used the commit keyword, so all the results will be committed and it will remain permanently in our database server. So, this is called durability. So, this is the acid principle that we follow in transactions. You might be aware that uh, our transactions basically begin with begin and end with commit or roll back. Either we commit our transactions of, or if there is an issue, we roll back our transaction. So, commit simply means if transaction is completed successfully, commit command will make the changes permanent. And roll back means if there is an issue in any of the transaction action, everything will be rolled back. So, the behavior of the transaction can be controlled by auto commit, right. Auto commit simply means if we make it, basically it is by default 1. If it is, if auto commit keyword is 1, then all the transaction statement is committed automatically. We don't have to use the commit and the end to commit the transactions. When it is 0, then we have to provide the commit close at the end of the transaction to commit all the queries. So, here you can see we can execute SQL commands by using MySQL query, right? We can we can use transactions in PHP as well. We can use our MySQL query function to start the transactions or to commit the transactions or to roll back the transactions. So, basically the transactions can be executed straightforward directly, but it is always better to use a particular table type to do that. Basically, we use inodb tables in our case 
So I, I know DB tables are called transaction safe tables. Means transactions can execute perfectly on these tables and our commit and rollback will work as per the as asset principle. So we use I know DB tables simply what we do, how we can use uh, from the MySQL version 5.6, I think 5. Yes, from the 5.6, the default that the table uh, table type is chosen as INODB. Before that, the default table type was my exam. We had to manually alter our table to make it INODB. So these are the table types. Although these are not the, not the part of this uh, session, I will simply let you know. If we are going to do any kind of transactions, or we are going to, uh, we have, we are having, we are going to apply some kind of constraints on our database, like uh, uh, foreign key constraints and all. So we, we are going to use InnoDB tables in case, in that case, we are not going to use MyISM table, my exam tables. MyISM tables are basically for reads. If we are doing only read from a particular table, we are going to use MyISM. But if writes are more reads are less, then we should prefer InnoDB tables. I think uh, you might already be aware of these concepts as, uh, I think Swamijit, you are uh, proficient in Oracle, so you might be hard of these terms and terms, and what if you might also be clear about these terms. So you might be aware of what is table type, what is InnoDB, what, what is MyExam, Is it? Yes, so I see. Your concept is same. Uh, either it is Java or it is MySQL, it is Oracle. The concepts are same. The usage is a bit different. Here you can see we are using create table student. We are giving the column name, column type, and then size, not null, email. Column type, uh, column type, size, and type of table. So here we are giving type is equal to InnoDB. If I don't give this type, if we are using 5.6 version of MySQL, it will automatically take it by default. Take it InnoDB. If it is we are using the earlier versions, it will take MySQL. So this is the difference that is put in the latest version of my, uh, MySQL, because NUDB tables are the most preferred tables. If we are going to perform any kind of transactions or we are going to do any kind of referential integrity kind of thing or like uh, foreign key constraints. So we, are, we use NUDB tables in that case. So this was about transactions. So first of all, let's see this. what is this auto commit. Auto commit I have told you that if we set, we can set like this, set auto commit equal to 1. Now we, if I execute it, now if we start a transaction and if we run something, it will be committed automatically. If we make it by default, so in order to make a transaction, we keep it auto commit equal to 0. So I will do so I will do set auto commit equal to zero. I will do update like I'm having students table and in students table I'm having uh, these records. So what I'm going to do in in my first record, I'm going to change email address. Update students set email is equal to mohit at the rate yahoo.com. Right now it is gmail.com. I'm going to do it yahoo.com. 
then I will do all back. See now what happens. Here, I've done start auto commit equal to zero. So it is showing me one query executed. Now I will start my transaction. And once I've started my transaction, I will update students. Now if I see select star from students. What you can see, the email ID becomes mohit at the rate yahoo.com. Now, I do rollback. Now, see what happens. See, email has again become mohit at the rate gmail.com because all the queries that I'm running that are under a transaction. Transaction is a set of queries that either all will be committed or no one, nothing will be committed. So if I do the rollback, everything will be rolled back. So you can see the student email again becomes more at threadgmail.com. But if I update it and I check it, it is mohit at the yahoo.com. But if I do commit, then after doing the commit, if I try to roll back, I will not be able to roll back because commit simply means it makes the changes permanent. Now, if I run the rollback thing, I will not get mohit at the rate gmail.com. I will get mohit.yahoo.com because after making the change, I have committed it. And so if it is committed, you cannot roll back it. Right? So this was commit and rollback. This was a transaction. Means you start a transaction, you execute some queries. If any error or unexception occurs in between, you can roll back, and everything will be rolled back from each and every table or each and every change that you have made. Everything will be rolled back. I think uh, this was the simplest way that I might have told you because normally transactions are very complex and showing example of complex uh, transactions may confuse the people. So this was the simplest example that I, I, I could give you. So you might be clear now what is transactions, how we start transactions, what is rollback, what is commit.